What's up guys, welcome back. Today we will be photographing the Andromeda Galaxy with the Canon 90D, the 70-200mm f2.8 and the Star Adventure 2i Pro. This is the most important part of the setup, that way we track the stars and we don't have any star trailing. A light year is a time measured from the distance it takes light to go from here to here over a year. It takes light 25 million years to get from that galaxy here to Earth, which means what I'm seeing is 25 million years into the past. The first thing I'm going to do while I'm out here is polar align my equatorial mount. The way I do this is I find the North Star, Polaris, it's right there in my case, and I'm gonna use this little black scope to align it. A very important part that most people mess up is you don't want to have Polaris in the center or the dot that you see through the scope. You want to have it on one of the edges, which you find on a star tracking app. I use PS Align, and it shows me that right there, that little, if my camera will ever focus, come on, there we go. That little yellow dot right there, that is where I want Polaris to be on my scope. That's what I will see, that's where I'm gonna put Polaris. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to align my camera with Andromeda. But before I do that, I'm gonna dive into the settings I will be using for tonight. I will be shooting at, if my camera ever loads, 1 30th of a second, or my bad, pardon me, 30 seconds exposures, as much as I can. We're gonna be shooting wide open at f2.8 and ISO 3200. You can really push your ISO when, you, when doing astrophotography. Sometimes I go up to 6400 if I'm shooting a very faint object. I will be using my camera all the way at the 200 and I'm going to put on my lens hood to deter any unwanted light here on the ground. I will also be manually focusing. The way I'm going to align this is by using my star tracker. Quick tip, align your camera with Andromeda before you polar align. I got this part messed up and now my polar alignment will be off and I'll have to redo it after I get aligned. What I'm gonna do is rotate my camera up until it's pretty close to where Polaris is gonna be and then I'm gonna use this rot my bad, Andromeda's gonna be, and I'm gonna use the camera to rotate the rest of the way. And it should be about there-ish. Now to make sure we have everything focused in Andromeda lined up, we're now what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus over here until I see the stars come into frame, or focus. And there they are, they're starting to come in. Right about there-ish. Now I'm going to zoom in all the way on the brightest star. That way I can see it real nice and fine. And I can see when my light becomes a hairpin. The smaller, the better. And right about there. That's what you want to see, is a bunch of little stars as tiny as possible. Once you've done that, you know you're focused. Then I'm going to take my intervalometer. Should have done this first. Oops. My intervalometer, my remote shutter. I'm going to put that on. There we go. Put that on and take a single exposure. You don't necessarily have, eh, make sure your lens is in manual focus. You don't necessarily have to have your equatorial, equatorial mount on for the single exposure. You just want to find the object and it should appear within 30 seconds. It should more than appear in 30 seconds. One eternity later. 
There we go. That took a lot longer than expected, but I finally found Andromeda. It's about right there on the screen. And that right there is what it looks like on the back of the LCD. I don't know if you can really see that or not. Not really, let me adjust some settings real quick. That right there is what it should look like on the back of the screen, just a big blur. Now that we have that, we can turn our equatorial mount and start shooting. Going to come around here and I set it, turn on my equatorial mount and set it to stars. Yay. All right, now that we've done that, we are going to go back to 30 second exposures, F2.8, 360, and I'm going to just double check, make sure I am in focus. There we go. That should be in focus. Now, we're gonna make sure, we're just gonna do one quick test shot. Make sure everything's working as it should. One thing to be cautious of is this busy sign. So let's say you're shooting for three hours. The, shoot, the busy sign will usually take about 20, 30 seconds per 30 second exposure. So you're gonna be at about half of whatever exposure you did shoot. So if it's three hours, you'll probably only get about an hour and a half. Today, I'm looking to get about five hours. So I'll have about two and a half or so um, hours of exposure. All right, so we got our image. And that right there is how we're looking from a single exposure. I, you can't really see it real well. My camera isn't very good at focusing up close, but it's there, it's sharp. I'm just gonna readjust it, that way it's centered. After that, we shoot all night, come back in a couple of hours, and see how it did. Let me just real quick readjust. So now that we're back inside and we're done shooting, I'm going to go through a quick editing. This video isn't going to be a full editing tutorial. If you want that, let me know. I will also be assuming that you know how to stack. If you don't know how to stack, leave a comment and I will get back to you and I will potentially make a short or something explaining how to stack images. Anyway, we're going to open up Serial. As you see, I already have it open. We are going to come over here and open my raw my stacked image of Andromeda that's how we're looking the first thing I'm gonna do real quick is just crop out all of that stacking frame error right there just real quick you know just get it over with so that's the crop that I like it's in linear mode first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do an auto stretch we have it like this now we're gonna come up here to image processing we're gonna come down to background extraction. We're gonna press generate, and as you see, none of these dots are really on our galaxy that much. So we're gonna press compute background. And now we've got this. And I know this looks really noisy and really bad, but trust me, this is a good start. Next thing we're gonna do to get rid of all of this weird noise around, is we're gonna come over here and we're gonna press remove green noise. It didn't do much, but helped a little bit along the edges. And because of all this red noise right there, I'm just going to crop it out as well. Just like... There. Alright, now we're going to come back up here, and we're going to go over to Histogram. You may or may not need it, I'm just going to look at it real quick, see if it will help or hurt the image. It helps a little, but it isn't anything super important. I'm going to do an auto stretch, see what it thinks would look better. And that looks better, and I'm going to use that for 
my photo. We're going to apply. Now I'm going to save this and I will share it to Lightroom Mobile where we do some last minute adjustments and then it should be ready. So now that we have our image here in Lightroom Mobile, the first thing I'm going to do is try to get rid of a bit of this color noise you see here. I'm going to come over to details, color noise, and then reduce. It just helps a little bit with the overall appeal of the, Im appeal of the image. Now I'm going to play around with my brightness, play around my exposure, contrast. We're going to make sure we pre preserve this highlight and don't blow it. We don't want that. We're going to try to keep it around there-ish. Shadows, they're not making a huge difference. So we'll leave them right there-ish. Whites, that going too high does blow it. So we're going to keep it just there at a bit of low. Blacks, we're going to bring these down as to once again try to get rid of some of that black noise. We're going to lower that, do that. Now we are going to raise our shadows as to not have that amount, high amount of contrast in the center of the galaxy. Now we're looking there. I think I pushed my blacks a little too far. So I'm going to bring them up a bit more. And we're just going to have to live with that noise. I'm going to come over here to color correction. And we'll play around with that and see what I can do. We see that a good bit of it is red. So that is nice. I can pull those down. Orange is the galaxy, so I can't really kill those that much. I'm going to raise my luminance, though, just a little bit. Same with yellow. I believe it's my galaxy. So I'm just going to raise my luminance a little bit. Or lower my luminance to preserve that core. So I'll leave it probably about there. Now, greens should... Sign is usually a big culprit i'm not sure if it is in this case it's not that big and frankly i kind of like this blue on the star so i won't be too much of a critique with it while it does look a little bit better without blue i'm gonna leave it maybe right there purples are usually just noise so i can pretty much kill those and that's how we were before that's how we are now and then i'm just once again, I'm going to come over here and figure out what I can do with that. So if I raise my contrast and lower my blacks, I can get a bit more of that clean background, nice and well exposed Andromeda. Unfortunately, it is really grainy. I didn't shoot long and I'm trying to push this data further than it should be pushed to show. So, I mean, we'll see what a little bit of noise reduction does. Though typically, I really don't recommend using noise reduction. It makes your f photos really blurry and mushy and not very appealing. In this case, I think a little bit is going to be actually beneficial, so I'm going to do that. And I don't like how much contrast is, so I'm going to lower it a bit more again. Raise up the exposure. And there we go. That is a very simple edit for Andromeda very quick very simple you if you wanted to you could sit down and really edit this and push it well beyond this but for now I think this looks pretty good and acceptable and I'm happy with this on it I hope you guys like this video if you have any other questions make sure to let me know in the comments I will answer or at least see it. Um, remember to like and subscribe. And I'm hoping to get more videos out soon.